Hi everybody and thanks for watching my YouTube video about what to do when you find out that you're pregnant. First of all, congratulations. Whatever you decide, it's going to be an amazing, awesome journey and you're going to learn a lot about yourself. I guarantee it. So the first thing I want to talk to you is what to do if you don't have insurance. Um, don't be afraid. If you don't have insurance, you can go ahead and get covered under temporary Medi-Cal. Go ahead and do some Google, do a quick Google search for women's clinics because you're going to want to go see an OBGYN for at least that first visit and hopefully, or maybe also many others to follow after that. So you're gonna to wanna to go to that first visit if you don't have um, insurance and then eventually you'll be able to get covered under Medi-Cal. And so that's all across North America. So that's really cool, that's what's going on. And then if you do have insurance and you don't yet have an OBGYN that you're seeing, I would recommend Go ahead and doing a Google search for um, Facebook groups for new moms and go ahead and uh, ask for a recommendation from some of the moms on that Facebook group. Who do they recommend? Who's a good um, lady doctor? One of the things I wanted to talk about in this video was if you are not sure what to do, if it's an unplanned pregnancy and you're just not sure. And one of the most important things, ladies, that I would really like to speak to is for you to make this decision from your own heart and mind. And please don't let anybody talk you into doing anything and please don't let people pressure you. And please don't let people scare you into doing something. Um, this decision is going to be a huge decision and it's yours to make. Uh, please take the time to make that from a place that feels uh, like it's true to who you are. You know? um, some of the ways that I found was helpful when I you know, made the decision for myself was praying about it. I prayed about it a lot. So if you have a sense of a higher power and you pray, it's a good time to pray. I meditated also, and I also wanna recommend journaling for making that decision. I also watched a Teal Swan video, and um, she's a spiritual teacher. And she has a great video, and I'm going to post that up below where she um, talks about how to decide. If you do go in the direction of having an abortion, I really want to suggest that you go ahead and um, connect with an abortion support group in your area. It's really important to get support during such an intense time. That, that can be tough. It can be a really isolating experience for women. So I strongly recommend that you tap into the support that's available for you. Um, some other resources that might help is calling 211. That's a nationwide service. It connects you with community resources related to pregnancy and other things. So go ahead and call 211 and let them know that you're pregnant and they'll tell you a bunch of different resources that might help you. WIC is a service that, that can help um, low income families. So if you are in a situation where you don't have enough money, they can help out um, to pay for food during your pregnancy and also after you have your baby if you choose to. And of course, there's always good old Google. Do a Google search for free pregnancy resources in blank, insert the name of your city here. I got free clothes, I got a car seat, even free therapy, and I even tapped into a home nurse program where I had somebody visiting my house, my home every week and sharing resources with me, answering questions that I had, sharing information, and that was really helpful. So you can tap into those resources. I also recommend going to the library and checking out books, of course. Just read about it, learn about what's happening to your body that will help you to feel more empowered. And knowledge is definitely power, especially in this case, especially as you get closer to labor. I also recommend connecting with a support group or spiritual community and staying consistent as much as you possibly can. So if you already have a church group that you're going to, go every Sunday. Call the people from your group when you're not at church. Hey, just wanted to check in. Talk about your feelings if you feel safe. And same with uh, spiritual community. If you don't have one, Google something that, um, that will fit your personal belief system, whatever that is. I, I think that can be a great source of support. I encourage you, whatever you decide and wherever you're at in your life to really tap into that support. It's super important. Okay, so now some basic stuff. If you read more about pregnancy, you'll probably see these things pop up again. But I'm just going to 
throw them out there. So first I would recommend um, doing Kegels every day. And if you don't know what a Kegel is, it's um, when you tighten the same muscles that you would tighten to stop the flow of urination if you're going to the bathroom. So you're gonna tighten those muscles and then release. And what this does is tones um, your bottom for when you give birth. It can help to reduce the possibility of tearing during labor, which happens a lot with women. It can help with that. And it's also really important to do those after you have your baby to um, strengthen those muscles again. So I recommend doing Kegels three times a day for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes, and you can do them anytime, like whether you're driving or sitting or reading, just tighten, hold, release, do repeat for 10 minutes. It might feel weird at the beginning when you first do it, but once um, some more time goes by, um, you'll feel, your muscles will start to become more toned and it won't be as hard to get them to engage. So that's very important. Um, no more abs, ladies. If you've been working out doing abs, you can't do abs anymore no matter what stage you're at in your pregnancy. If you've been doing abs for weeks and you didn't know you were pregnant, don't freak out. It's okay. I did abs for a long time before I found out, three months before I found out I was pregnant. And um, my baby's fine. He's actually super healthy. I, I probably need to show him to you guys in this video. Um, but it's recommended that pregnant women exercise for 30 minutes a day. So whatever kinds of exercising you like, whether it's walking or running or swimming, a lot of pregnant women really like swimming because they get to float and it can really like give your body a nice release. Swimming is okay. I think that you could swim at any stage, but the general rule of thumb around um, exercising while pregnant is that you don't want to take on a new exercise regime. So whatever you've been doing, you can keep doing it, but for example, if you haven't been running while you're pregnant, isn't the time to start running, bottom line. Personally, I did, um, I did hot yoga. I'd been doing hot yoga for six months up until my pregnancy, and I did hot yoga throughout the entire course of my pregnancy. So I wouldn't recommend starting hot yoga if you've never done it before and you're pregnant, but if you have been doing it for six months, it might be okay, but of course, uh, many um, OBGYNs recommend against it. So it's really a personal decision. Again, just do what feels right for you. Uh, very important. I recommend um, taking prenatal yoga also. That can be awesome, awesome exercise. Go get yourself to a class. And that can be another great way to tap into a community of other women and people who can be supportive to you is being consistent with your prenatal yoga. Activity is super important. I would not underrate that at all um, I think that you can actually bypass a lot of some of the like more difficult symptoms of pregnancy things that come around come with it like morning sickness and like swelling of the ankles and feet by being consistent with your exercise because I was and my pregnancy compared to a lot of women I know was relatively easy as far as eating goes I recommend six mini meals a day you want to eat tons of fruits and vegetables that's what I did. And it's going to help um, with your fatigue level. So you're less likely to get overly tired if you eat in that way. And drink lots of water, lots and lots of water, lots and lots of water, lots and lots of water. I can't say it enough. That's gonna be super important for your body, not just during pregnancy, but also after if you're breastfeeding because breastfeeding is really dehydrating. Um, if you've been drinking coffee up until this point, it's okay to continue coffee, but it's not recommended. If you do decide to continue coffee, um, please no more than a cup a day. Um, 300 more calories a day is actually about the same I read as a Snickers bar. So you're not going to be, you know, just like gorging yourself at every meal. I mean, if you want to, that's a personal choice, but um, when people say eating for two, I think sometimes it gets a little bit misunderstood in our common vernacular. You're actually only gonna be eating a little bit more. Um, so that's kind of my, my primary welcome to pregnancy. I mainly made this video because I want you to know that whoever you are and whatever you're going through, you're not alone. There's other women who have been there too. 
So I really want you to hear that. I want you to feel supported as much as possible and know that if um, pregnant, if, have, if motherhood is something that you're pursuing, that you absolutely can get through it because there are help and resources out there. And finally, if you're looking for a business opportunity, I want to share one with you. It's the type of business that you can work from home, you can set your own schedule, and the type of business that will allow you to earn passive income so that if you're consistent in a few years as a new mom, you and your um, son or daughter can be living off of passive income. So I hope that this reaches you in a totally blissful state. Thanks so much for tuning into my video. Please like, like subscribe, and um, stay tuned for my future videos. Thanks. Bye.